OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Hi, welcome to Adult Education Online Forums. This is going to be a super informal thing. I'm going to show you some slides, talk about some of my favorite organizations, and then I'm going to go on to the online forums. I also have a couple more to, to share with you, so let's get started. Um, the question is, is that we're so busy as teachers. Why would we want to join another forum or another organization or do any volunteering it's so difficult so um and then it seems that many of the adult education organizations seem to overlap on their missions so um so when we go to check out the forums we get we want to learn more about the organizations but we get stopped by the paywalls so today i hope to be taking you behind the payrolls and um, showing you some of the forums. Uh, I'm going to be talking, uh, focusing mostly on links, TESOL, and COABE and their, uh, their uh, local affiliates. Please let me know if there's anything in particular that you want me to share with you. For instance, if you want to know more about TESOL, or you want to know more about COABE, or those kind of things, uh, I would really be happy to take you where you need to go. Jennifer, Does, can you hear me? Yes, I can okay, barely now, hear you. Barely hear me. Yeah. Okay, okay, now I can hear you. Yeah. Okay, so. Now I can hear you really well. Because oh, I'm right here. Okay, so yeah. So we're going to have the um, monitor move closer to you. So that way. Um, when the cat comes in, I'll say, okay, you got a question. You. Did you hear me? Yes, I do. Okay. So, so if, if you get a question in chat, I'll say, okay, Jennifer, we got a question. Okay, great. Um, right. um, anybody, is everybody okay for me to continue? Yes. Okay, great. So uh, let's move ahead. Uh, today, I want to really talk about uh, something that I uh, just, well, I have been a member for a while, but I've join as a moderator. So that is the LINCS uh, Literacy Information and Communication System. Uh, maybe some of you know it better by um, its website, links.ed.gov. And it's an initiative by the Uni uh, US Department of Education Office and Career Technical and Adult Education. Or you see, you hear this word all the time, Octa, octa, not octopus, octa. These, this is the the branch of the department, U.S. Department of Education, that takes care of adult education, and per, uh, they are responding uh, a lot to uh, WIOA funding and also to um, IECLE uh, uh, initiatives. So that's the that's the source of our legislation, our initiatives, um, things that we do every day in adult education. It's coming out of Octa. So the Lynx website provides high quality on-demand education opportunities to practitioners of adult education so those practitioners can help adult learners and successfully transition to post-secondary education and 21st century jobs. So we want to get the, the students um, build up their literacies, not only in English, but also in work for, in work skills and digital literacy and cultural literacy, and then so they can move on and integrate into American society. League's audiences include adult education instructors, program administrators, adult learners, and more. This is the website here, links.ed.gov, and they have a YouTube channel where they post some, but not all of their forums where they invite speakers to come in and discuss, discuss topics of importance. Uh, another slide. Um, so I wanna talk a little bit more about the links community. So there's 
13, um, there's 13 communities of practice. So this is where people meet and discuss things. They, um, they uh, talk about the latest um, initiatives in their own, in their own, um, in their own fields. Um, I want to do a shout out to the Civics Education and Citizenship Forum. I'm the new moderator of this. It was just started. Uh, I guess uh, we kicked it off in December. Also, we have a new one from diversity, equity, and inclusion. So that also is very, uh, very much uh, reflects uh, the growing, uh, the growing want and need and desire for more inclusive uh, education and workforce initiatives. So we're gonna, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna demonstrate some of the forms on uh, links. So let, let's uh, click, uh, click this. So here we are at, uh, well, let me go to the front page. Actually, this is the front page of links. And so at the top, we have community courses, resource collection, and st uh, state resources. Down here, they have uh, basically welcoming information, some of the resources that we have. And um, across across on the top, again, we have community courses, which is professional development courses. I'm currently taking one in uh, diversity and also about um, adult, let's see, let me, let me, I wanna get this one right. And maybe it will not come up. Oh, I'm take, taking one about English language acquisition. So of course, all these free, these are free and self-paced. Um, resource collection, these are- Jennifer? Yes, please. Um, the, the, from chat, we don't see the slide you're referring to. Mm. They don't see the slide you're referring to. Okay, one minute, please. I may have popped over a little bit too quickly. Okay, am I okay? Yeah. We can okay, so that. now I popped over from my slide deck to the links website. Okay, can you guys see it now, Peg and Austin? Yes, thank you, we're good. Okay, great, thank you so much. Yeah, please, <laughs> please tell me what I'm doing wrong. Okay, <laughs> help me. Uh, okay, so again, this is the links website and um, across the top, we're talking about community. So this is where uh, uh, people will come together and discuss d discuss different topics, referring to those 13 forums I was talking about. We have online courses for professional development. For instance, um, I just uh, started one, uh, I started two, and one of them is about uh, diversity and also on English language acquisition. Uh, let's see if I can actually do this. Oh, yes, I can start this. I'm really particularly interested in talking about the language needs of today's adult uh, language learners. So that's really important to me. And it's important to me, especially because I teach citizenship and students come in, they say, teacher, I don't speak English, but I have my, my interview is in one month, what do I do? And so um, because this has been a, a pattern that could be very upsetting and very disruptive to classes. I'm trying to basically dig in a little bit deeper so we can um, prepare the students a little bit better. Also, we're very interested in seeing we've had a, a new um, group of people who are coming in that um, have very or non-existent digital literacy. So again, this is something that's gonna be really helpful. And again, it's self-paced and it's free. I want to go back to the resource collection. The resource collection is uh, from the states or from the federal uh, uh, administration. And they're basically talking about, um, here, let me take a look at this one. This one, adult citizenship education. Of course, they have this curriculum guide and they're talking about, uh, uh, it's a PDF. They have things in there for math and we have a really, really good and very uh, solid numeracy community on links. Uh, let me uh, go back up to the top, state resources. Again, 
uh, this is other things specifically coming out of the state. However, to gain access, to gain the fullest access of, to this, uh, this information, you're going to really have to log on. So now I'm going to be taking you behind the membership wall and the membership to links is free. For instance, if you join some of our other organizations, TESOL, uh, CATESOL, those kind of things, you're going to have to get to the meat of this, you're going to have to pay. Here, it's all free. So I want to go to community. I want to log in. You could create an account. Now, I've already created my own account, but all it required, I all I required was an email address and my name. I'm logging in. So these are this is my my uh, these are some of the groups that I uh, belong to, but I want to show you all of them. Okay, so here's the community uh, again. You're going to see this. You're going to see career pathways. Some really great discussion in here. Uh, let's take a look at some of the more recent ones. And the more recent ones, I hope you can see that I'm going to make a little bit bigger. Okay. So we have some really recent discussion about financial aid for adult learners. And this has been a big uh, stumbling block for some of our, our uh, students who are trying to transition from adult education, which is normally free, into community, excuse me, community colleges. And even though community colleges um, have non-credit or they have very low costs, it's still, prohibit sometimes the costs are prohibitive for our students so again we have some interesting discussions here uh this one an online course to introduce workforce preparation activities again <laughs> what they would do a lot of times they were commenting on a previous um sorry a previous posts but this one, I guess it started in 2018 and people are still talking about it. So um, I wanna move on, civics education and citizenship. This one is uh, important to me. Again, I'm the moderator. I'm the one who, um, uh, I have been posting most of the information, but the big topic of discussion right now in our uh, group is about the upcoming or the proposed redesign of the citizenship test. I posted uh, a really pro um, uh, redesign uh, article from um, Lynn Weintraub. We had a very positive comment on that. And then uh, Bill Bliss uh, basically posted a critique of the uh, of the um, uh, proposed redesign. And I added information here about the uh, barrier or the um, the natural test redesign that happened yesterday. Um, that was one of the full, uh, online webinars from USCIS. So um, I'm, today, uh, after, uh, after I'm done with TDLS, I'm going to post an update to it. Plus, I'm going to uh, USCIS is going to be so sending out those slides. Uh, so I'm going to be posting that too. Also, we have information in here about uh, Women's History Month, some of the resources that I posted for that. Uh, some people have been coming to me offline. I would like them to comment online. But uh, we had some uh, for African American History Month. Um, I have, uh, I'm gonna, uh, we have a really uh, vibrant community on corrections. And I wanna do a shout out just right this very second to COEB because COEB is really a leader in cor uh, corrections education. I wanna see, I see there's some comments in the chat. Oh, yes. Can, um, Pe Peg Gould, um, are, you, are you online? Do you have access to a uh, microphone? Hi, Jennifer. It's okay. Peg. Peg, I'm going to flip over to the numer. Is it the math numeracy one? Mm -hmm. wanna... Okay. So, you know, I hated math when I was in school. If my teachers had access to this, I would probably be much farther in my career and I'd be much more math positive. 
they put up some amazing things. So what's the webinar you're going to be talking about? If you scroll back up, because okay. I'm actually um, working together with Brooke. Okay, great. So we will be leading, co-leading a discussion. I, I forget the exact date in April. I want to say April 16th, but I uh -huh. could be off a little bit. Okay. Um, about financial literacy in adult education math programs. Oh my God, that's going to be so good. Oh, we need that so much. And that's so appropriate for, for uh, people think about financial literacy, especially around tax time. And That's exactly. Excellent. Exactly. And it's relevant for uh, English language learners as well as for ABE HSE students too. So it will be really great. And we would love big participation, Jennifer. So if oh. you have a chance and log on at that week, I would appreciate it. And I personally invite anyone who is on this session to log on to Links Financial Literacy mid-April and please engage in our discussion. Okay, so I'm gonna put I wanna point out to something like there's the major groups, like like there's the major numeracy, uh sorry, there's the major math and numeracy. But there's also microgroups, and I just want to flip over to those microgroups for a second, okay? If I can, where's my profile? Oh, I'm in the wrong place. Okay, here I am. So they have these, um, you know what? This is too big for people to see uh, accurately. So. I'm gonna make it smaller, try to find where I'm trying to go and then try to make it bigger. Okay, so is it gonna be in the math numeracy uh, form or is it gonna be in one of the microgroups about, let's see if I can find the microgroups. I'm not sure, Jennifer. So give me a second and let me just double check. Okay, great. And if I'll I if I even have that that drilled down information, yeah. So that is that is a really because they do have uh okay. And now I'm going to be uh, clicking over to all uh, events. I'm not seeing oh they haven't posted uh oh, it might be in career pathways. See understanding financial literacy for adult learners. That might be it. Okay. But you would think. Yeah, because I don't recognize Chrissy as a moderator. Right. Uh, Brooke and I are moderators. Okay. And then here are some of the microgroups. And the financial literacy one is right here. Mm -hmm. This is the, the one right here. But it seems to be an old group. So I bet you're right. And they're going to be doing it in the math, the, the numeracy one. Yeah. In the math Just numeracy give one. Me, give me another second. I'm going to sure. turn my camera off and my microphone. I'll come back on. I won't okay. interrupt, but I'll come back on. No, please, please come back on and tell me what's going on. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, OTAN has presented a lot in the integrating technology uh, group. And so they've had the, this group has sponsored several talks by OTAN uh, subject matter experts. Uh, here's a really interesting uh, discussion about 21st century math. And I believe they're using, um, uh, this one is about related to uh, using spe specific devices to, oh, um, the Desmos uh, classroom activities. So anyway, enough about that. I would love to come back to links, uh, um, oh, I do want to show this new um, this new forum. This one is diversity, equity, and inclusion. Again, they're talking about intersectionality. So intersectionality is it. People think about uh, oh, it's personal. We don't want to talk about it. But the thing is, is that personal is political. Political is personal. It does relate to. Um, how we can see we can see problems we can basically address them and we can basically make this our classes classrooms a community of welcome for every uh, everyone so anyway um this is really interesting in the discussion of intersectionality is the understanding that it's not enough to view 
the parts of identity, but to see all the ways that they interact. So I'm really expecting some really major exciting things out of this this group for um, from the um, diverse, sorry, from the uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, group. Let me see. Anything else? Anybody else want to see any of the questions? Okay. Uh, also, Jennifer, we have split. Excuse go ahead. me. Just before yeah. you leave here, I found yeah. the email. Um, specifically, it says two day asynchronous cons uh, discussion, uh -huh. April 17 and 18, financial literacy. That's all the more drill down that I have, whether it's under math and numeracy or whether it's under career pathways. I really think it's under math and numeracy because it's part of the adult numeracy network, which is a, a subcommittee of COAB. Oh, excellent. And, and since the, Brooke is there as a moderator for that math and literacy strand overall, I imagine that's where this will be too. Okay. Peg, just a couple more or check a couple more questions for you. I'm really glad that you are what kind of um okay, what do you teach now? Now I I am not in the classroom anymore. I direct an entire department. Yay, what do you do? Uh, I direct adult education programs, free and non-credit Title II, a lot of others, um, ABE, HSE, ESL, IET, IELCE, other career training programs, bridges to employment success for out-of-school foster youth. Um, wow. They are mostly my programs. And then it kind of slides a little bit depending on what available funding <laughs> is. Okay, so what, what institution do you do this for? I work for Mercer County Community College in Trent, New Jersey. Okay, excellent. Thank you. So, th welcome. <laughs> it's a, it might be warmer there than it is here now. Yeah. It probably is, but not by much. Okay, great. Um, it's it's any, maybe 46 today, but I know you all have some snow on the ground. Yes. You, you took our snow. Just a little bit. We'll send it back. It's not a problem. <laughs> no, no, thank you. <laughs> okay. So anyway, um, I am really excited. Really looking forward to hear that. And uh, please... Um, Chloe, I think my Chloe slide is coming up really quick. So um, let me go back. Um, and I would like, I would love it if you would like to share about the, uh, uh, about Chloe. So one second. Okay. It might be the next one. Oh, TESOL is next. And then Chloe is, is coming up in like two slides. Okay. Teaching. Um, uh, English, uh, okay, TESOL, TESOL International Association, formerly the teachers of English to speakers of other languages. So they're, they have the resources to advance expertise in English language teaching. They have a new uh, uh, initiative, six principles for excellence in English and language teaching that I'm going to demonstrate. Uh, this is their website, TESOL.org. And of course, there's the YouTube channel TESOL um, INC, which they they do put post many of their um, of their uh, webinars up there. So let's take a look at TESOL.org. Again, I need to do a new share. And where are we? Okay, accept. So here I'm in, I have not basically stepped in behind the paywall. It's asking me to join TESOL, but I don't, I just want to show you what, what's available right now before I actually start uh, going into some of the forums. So we have welcome to the new TESOL website and they really, really did update it. Uh, they usually have a really good, um, what is that called? Um, oh, great. Now I've lost my English. Uh, a new slide that basically shows the latest stories up here. Uh, the, so they're basically talking about the new TESOL uh, convention that's coming up uh, just in a week or two up in Portland. And I hope I was thinking to go to that, but I don't know. I, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to travel to Portland this year, but they also, TESOL also has an option where they're doing an, an online forum 
the um, I think two weekends like the April the third and April the fourth. So some of the presentations will be repeated, and I can enjoy it from the comfort of my my own home. Of course, they have the press going down. They have uh, information about other worldwide events. Uh, so, uh, and you can keep on scrolling and uh, there's the information at the very bottom. So you're looking at this. Oh, wait a minute. Did I just see a picture of Susan Gear from Catisal? Yay. So she has really gone, uh, gone and done some great things. So anyway, hi, Susan. Um, I think she presented on Wakelet this the, for to TDLS today. They have information here about careers, and a lot of people come to uh, TESOL or T adult education after jobs in K-12, or maybe, um, for instance, I came to TESOL uh, after um, working in Silicon Valley for 20 years. Uh, fortunately, I was able to basically um, basically leverage my tech uh, experience to go into uh, uh, adult education. They have information there about pro professional development uh, and advocacy. And last year, I was able to travel to Washington, D.C. to participate in the TESO Ledge Day, we were, where we went to um, meet our legislators uh, and talk about uh, certain uh, legislation that we wanted to pass. However, when I got there, my senators and my representatives were involved with um, with the um, the January 6th committee uh, hearings. Um, and a lot of people, especially from California, were not doing in-person meetings. They wanted to do meetings by Zoom. So when people were going up to Capitol Hill, they, uh, I was a, uh, and it was raining so terribly, I went to a bookstore instead. And then I met with my representatives uh, when I went back to California online, and it was a very fruitful discussion. However, one of the really great things about going to TESOL Advocacy Day is I was able to meet uh, 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 Dominic, Dominic from, uh, from Octe. So uh, I was able to meet Mr. Octay in person and talk about adult education and English and also um, the uh, the we were trying to um, we were thinking about the US CIS um, uh, revision that was coming up. I want to take you now behind the the paywall. So, uh, oh, if you want to join TESOL, if you want to become a member. There's different levels of, uh, of being uh, a member. Uh, the professional membership is 105. They do have uh, things for lower, uh, for lower levels, for new professionals, et cetera, et cetera. So they really try to give people an opportunity to come in and participate at the level they feel comfortable in. But now I'm gonna log in, hopefully. Please remember me. So now when we take a look at this, we're gonna be seeing something a little bit different. I'm gonna to go to, I'm gonna to wanna to go into um, uh, uh, the, uh, sorry. I think I wanna to go to the Abbas QC action. Actually, I wanna to go to my T, so what am I talking about? Um, Anyway, so uh, sorry. Let me step. Uh, let me step back. So they here TESOL uh, it provides uh, some really great resources about advocacy. Again, uh, oh, they just put up this date that they're going to have the summit again, the advocacy summit again. They always have information here about taking action, not only for teachers, but also how to make your, how to get your students involved in it. So uh, let me, I'm trying to find my TESOL. And of course, when I wanted, when I was doing it today, oh, here we go. TESOL Global Community, that's where I wanted to go. So this is where I would basically get involved with uh, information like, okay, I know about the conferences that are coming up. 
This one was really interesting here about, uh, this one was a webinar about 60 second recording audio and video. And so people people now don't think anything of it. They're uploading things from, from TikTok or uh, to YouTube. But uh, this person was doing this. This is a this is actually you can play this webinar. And this person is doing it to um, uh, look at student responses. So it was a really, really interesting uh, video. I was glad that I was uh, that I, I watched it. Um, also, here is somebody who is very, very, very active on uh, uh, on links. Uh, Susan Finn Miller, she's basically um, working in um, uh, the English English acquisition uh, forum, and she's basically cross posting some information about the uh, uh, webinar that we had on links uh, about t uh, t uh, doing writing and teacher learners uh, paragraphs. And already in adult education, we're seeing things that have been written by chatbots that are coming through and trying to be passed off as uh, student work. So how do we encourage our students to basically pursue the um, information that they want to learn how to write, to write? They want to have that skills. They can't simply rely on a chat bot or Google Translate. Um, so what I always tell my students is the person who does the writing about the project is the person who is the most identified with the project and the person who usually gets the promotion at work. So there's um, all sorts of TESOL events that are not available unless you're a member. So again, a really, really, really rich um, uh, place to go to events. Um, again, here's uh, more information about events that are coming up. Again, they have a, a great calendar. calendar. Um, communities, I belong to all sorts of communities. Again, here's adult education. Uh, I did a lot with COVID-19 resources because I was doing a lot with online learning. Um, I'm very interested in immigration, um, immigration and refugees uh, uh, com concerns and social responsibility and TESOL advocacy. This is where I was pulling out a lot of information about the upcoming uh, citizenship uh, uh, test revision. Uh, and of course, there's working groups and e-groups and all sorts of things. Um, and you can post messages in the different forums and things like that. I'm going to step back into my... Um, step back into my slide. Oh, does anybody have any questions about TESOL before I continue? No? One thing that I wanted to share from TESOL that is very new and I'm not, I just learned about it the other day and I really need to dig into uh, it, but I think it will be helpful for adult educators adult educators to bring rigor to our um, profession is the six principles. And this is about the foundation for excellence in English language learning. So um, this one is, of course, we got to know our learners, okay? So especially if you're able to make personal connections, inform personal connections with students and their cultures, you're going to have a much more successful classroom. Number two, uh, again, let's see, we're going to basically trying to talk about expectations. So I'll, one of the things uh, when I, um, as I started um, getting past five years, especially teaching literacy, I basically started to lower my expectations for some of my students to feel, make them feel more comfortable. That did not help them. That basically fostered ossification of their language skills. So saying that you need to, you have to have some expectations for success is really, really super important. Um, so talking about high quality lessons for language development. So I cannot tell you how many times people, uh, I've seen especially substitutes come in and basically pass off K-12 material like for 
first or second graders onto a literacy level classroom. Um, it's inappropriate. Do they really know to, need to know about baby animal names? I don't think so. But you need to basically uh, attach information to uh, that are information to that are language appropriate, language literacy appropriate, but also appropriate to adult life skills and the adult responsibilities. Let's continue on. Uh, we're going to go on to number four. And we need to adapt lesson delivery as needed. It was really interesting th to move from classroom the next day you're we're teaching online in Zoom. It was difficult for students to take that information on. There was a real steep level of adaptation, but just handing out worksheets or the teacher doing the worksheet themselves and demonstrating it to the students, it really created a lot of passivity. So the thing is, is that we had to basically actually teach our students how to use some of those Zoom tools or some of the Loom tools or, uh, or record uh, uh, videos on themselves on their cell phones to do, give them active response. So again, this is really, that was really, really important. And I saw this particularly in my citizenship class where instead of basically, um, uh, basically uh, asking students to ask and answer things like a, um, showing them scripts and actually having them read off the script, we actually had to, um, a lot of times we were not using scripts and it came, became a much more, uh, authentic interview um, experience because we had to do a lot of things off script and without paper. So that was really helpful. Uh, and um, that informed my subsequent teaching when we came back into the classroom. Number five, we have to monitor and assess student language adult development. Our students in California have to take CASAS tests they're really eager to see how they did on those tests. And you think, oh, they really don't need to know. It doesn't, these, this is not a high stakes test. Again, it's a way to set expectations and to show students how they can progress and that the goals that they ultimately ha have uh, are accessible. And number six, we're talking about, oops, so number six. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, this is going to be coming up. Okay, so let's see. And here, oh, here's number six. Oh, this is number one, engagement and collaboration with the community of practice. So that's really, really important. There's some products that support this. Um, I will leave you to, um, so there's some books and everything like that. Uh, so I will step away and now I'm going to go take you into the CATESL, the CATESL forum. So any questions about TESOL before I continue on? Okay. Does anybody belong to TESOL or is anybody planning to go to the TESOL conference? I'm, I'm thinking about going in there um, online. Yeah. I, I really, I'd love to go, but I'm a little leery about traveling on airplanes right now. Every one of our teachers mm -hmm. who have traveled recently, when they've come back, they've had COVID. So even though, wow. yeah, 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 that was, that's hard to hear. That's hard to hear. So, um, I have but, a member of the Soul, and I, which I love. It's a great organization in California. Yeah, I do love Katiso. I do love their conventions. It was really nice in uh, Pasadena. Wow, yeah, that um, was great. But I came back with I came back with COVID. So, oh, and I was fully inoculated. So I don't know how that happened. But I, I was wearing a mask most of the time. Anyway, Katiso. Um, we had it was founded in 1969. One of the oldest uh, affiliates of uh, Tiso. And um, we, they have a great YouTube channel. Uh, I'm going to, um, and uh, no, I want to say that they have a lot of regional chapters, I think about 10. And, but the, the problem is with the regional chapters, they maintain independent websites or Facebook sites. 
And one of the problems is, is like, I wish they would post a page at least on Katiso where you can basically click those and, and see what's happening. But because it's an organization that runs on volunteers, sometimes people maintain the website, some people maintain the Facebook page, et cetera, et cetera. So you, you have that, that kind of uh, thing. We'd love to see if it would, uh, could be standardized a little bit. So anyway, uh, let's go on to Katiso. Uh, let's see, new share. So I hope we're all, are we all members of Katiso? Everybody, have you joined or not? Yeah, <laughs> the majority of the people in here are. Okay, <laughs> well, let me convince you why to, jo to join, okay? So again, um, I, t I always say to the, the people who are the, who run the Katisa website, it's like, hey, you go to this website, you have no idea what it's about. I wanna see adult, I wanna see adult teachers with adult students doing English activities. <laughs> so anyway, so on the front, of course, there's a lot of events that are coming up. Usually you do need to be a member to join some of these events. Um, so this is a basic pay, uh, the basic paywall on the front. Uh, they have um, information about membership or join or renew. Let's see how much it, uh, how much it is. Uh, Seventy-five dollars for a year, one hundred and thirty dollars for um, for two years. I think that also includes your membership to your regional group. Um, they have blogs and newsletters. Again, if you want to uh, get access to some of the later journals, um, you're going to have to uh, join. Uh, but there are some really. Oh, let's see. Oh, they do have some of the PDFs of the newer things. Okay, that's good. Uh, take a look at some of the, the journal articles have been very, very interesting. Um, so this one, um, I'm gonna, looks like they have some DEI and stuff that's coming, uh, com coming on. Uh, resources, we have advocacy and um, so uh, racial justice um, and racial and social injustice during the Black Lives Matters um, um, uh, uh, movement. So I'm going to log in. And here, I'm not gonna spend that much time on it because a lot of us, it seems that we're on and we're already uh, members. But here, one of the most important things are is we have the message boards and on the message boards, message boards, update, update, update. Could be that my connection is a little bit slow. Okay, here we go. So here are some uh, updates here. We're gonna talk, oh, here we have a lot of the updates from the chapter. So that's really, that's really, really good to hear, to see, uh, what's what's going to happen so that's going to take away some of the concerns that i had about the the uh, regional boards um this is a very very we have um the pronunciation and the material writers interest group is really good also the technology group is good i have to get in involved with the refugee interest group uh bill bliss i believe uh sponsor or posted information about he has concerns about the, the test revision. And also there's uh, things in here about uh, about uh, refugee crisis. So anyway, the, the um, boards are really, really interesting. Um, I find a lot of stuff that I bring back to my own teachers about that, uh, but I've forgotten about the chapter stuff. Um, the job bank is really good in, in case you, um, because a lot of our jobs in uh, for sit or for ESL and adult education, um, you look at EdJoin, or you can look at CC Registry. But the thing is that if you want to find uh, other jobs, the job board here at Katiso is really really good. So they have, as you can see, that they have uh, information in there from uh, from outside the United States. Oh. 
Uh, and also they carry things about from nonprofits. So that's really, really good to hear. Um, we have also um, the advocacy. Oh, no, we already have that. Um, there was one other thing I wanted to show. This one is interesting to see who is our members are and considered uh, if people might consider uh, running for uh, membership themselves in some of these interest boards. Does anybody, sorry, does anybody have anything they want to add about the Cotisal, about Cotisal? Yeah, I, I, um, I love Catisol because they're all they're on it. You know, when they sent us home for uh, during the pandemic, you know, what was it, March 15, mm -hmm. 2020? Yeah. Uh, March 23rd, 2020, they had uh, Zoom, they had Zoom trainings on how to teach on Zoom. Yeah. Um, you know, I that whole weekend I was fretting for my students. You know, what about, how, how are they going to learn? You know, I'm going to lose them. And um, and then, you know, Katiso was right there picking it up. And I am just I have so much appreciation for for that organization, you know. I, yeah. And especially they brought Katiso brought over a lot of people from OTAN, a lot of people who are involved with OTAN, subject matter experts. They're also involved with Katiso. So there was. In fact, the, the current president is an employee of OTAN, but there was a lot of cross-pollinization where I think TESO really, uh, or CATESO really shines is that they, they bring in those special interest groups. So for instance, Marsha Chat has done so much on pronunciation. Uh, so uh, there's been so much on the materials writers and things like that. So really, really great information informed by civics content on Cotiso. So I cannot, uh, I love them. Absolutely love them. I mean, um, I liked it so much. I signed up I, for, you know, the maximum amount of years, you know, to be a member because I, I realized that this, this, they really care about my students and they care about me as a teacher. And I, I just, you know, that, that's, uh, that's something you, it, it's worth its weight in gold. Yeah, and they're really interested in fostering the profession too. So one second, can we do a quick time check? Where are we on the time? It's 10 minutes to noon. 11 and then when does this stop? 12. 12, okay, great. That's what I have. I that's the, okay. Okay, great. So I'm moving on to Coeb. Love Coeb. Their webinars are awesome. So, um, Katiso, they don't post everything to their YouTube channel. They keep, oh, that's what I want to show you. One second on the Katiso stuff. The Coe. Yeah. No, I need to go back to Katiso. Let's see. I want to go back to Katiso because their webinars, they don't post all their webinars online. But they do, oh no, I'm not gonna be able to find it. Engagement, is this a community? Engagement project committees, resources, file archive. Maybe that's it. Okay, sorry. I'm not gonna be able to find it in time, but they post recordings of their webinars internally. They do not post everything externally. So please, sorry, I got flustered and I can't show you the recording uh, the, where they make rec recordings of their webinars. Very, very important. Marsha Chan does post some of the pronunciation webinars on her, her own uh, YouTube channel, uh, Pronunciation Doctor. But if you want to see the other information from, uh, from the Katiso webinars, please go and dig a little bit uh, deeper into the resources than I just did, okay? Uh, let's go to COABE. COABE is an absolutely wonderful uh, group, especially the, they really address ASEESL -E family literacy skills development, workforce and, de and development, and they do a tremendous job on corrections where 
not many people want to touch corrections, but they do a lot of things with uh, in in um, the correction system around literacy um, and uh, workforce, and then also uh, adult basic skills have helped many people get their high school equivalency degrees. So please take a look at uh, COAPE and especially some of their their webinars on them and their their um, convention is coming up and it's going to be in Georgia. So um, I want to do a quick look over to COAB. One second. Let me go share. Uh, COAB.org. Uh, here we are. They're going to do their higher level. They have a really good news resource. Their Avocast, their new um, podcast is really, really good. And then Behind Every Employer, uh, because they're talking about um, a lot of times you're, you're thinking like, hey, I want a job. What is the employer thinking? How can I get uh, access to that? So getting into the mind of the employer is really going to help some of our adult learners get that, that job that they want and truly deserve to have. So take a look at that. Um, lots of things in there about digital equity. Um, again, the correction seminars a, a symposium is coming up. Uh, they don't really have a paywall per se like they do at Catisil, but they do have a lot of initiatives that you really need to dig down on. Uh, the COABE Journal has a lot of the free PDFs. So if you dig into their, their COABE Journal, you can see some of their old PDFs. Um, PDFs of some of your their older issues. Uh, they are at the forefront of basically setting the pattern for our legislative days um, and basically taking action. And so um, I can't recommend them enough. I really need to, I think I really need to move on to our next one. Um, and I hate to give COABE a short shift. Uh, Peg, did you want to say anything more about COABE? Yeah. Sorry, I couldn't unmute for a minute, but <laughs> I mean, COAPE, like you said, Jennifer, it's the it's the premier organization for adult education mm -hmm. in the country, mm -hmm. and it offers a lot of free webinars, professional developments, and I'm not just talking about the annual conference either, but Jeff Abramovitz, who mm. does, um, I think he chairs the corrections section of yes, he does. Yes. He he is outstanding. Um, Aaron is doing the Avocast. Um, Anson and Jeffrey are doing the um the Every Employer podcast on there. Um, I was in the inaugural group of the state um adult education advocates. Uh -huh. um, we're currently, I think, going on our fourth cohort of state advocates now. So it's a it's a big group, it's a cohesive group. Um, it is extremely, extremely professionally run. They offer the the most outstanding webinars, speakers, everything. They they work tirelessly to bring together the leading voices of adult education and those other stakeholders who are important to our field. Yeah, a lot of nonprofits. What I appreciate about COABE as opposed to TESOL, TESOL is really oriented a lot of times to university or higher education or K-12 people. So constantly I'm looking, when I'm looking at TESOL stuff, I'm basically doing the translation in my head for adult education. I feel so much more comfortable at COABO conferences because I know we are only talking, there are adults in the room, there are adults in our minds, so and adults in our hearts. And the reason why is because we really take seriously the, the adult as a the responsible person taking care of the family so if the adult is successful the children will be successful too so oh, it's, that's a great point jennifer we have a question here sure. in the, the um actually it's not a question jennifer i want to also reinforce mm -hmm. coabe's um um you know work as mm -hmm. well everybody to remember anybody who's in california if you're a member of ccae you're automatically a member of coabe 
-hmm. So it's, you know, we, we understand that they're the national organization. They do things across the United States. So that's an important thing to remember as well. Just wanted to share that. Oh, yes. Thank you so much. And in fact, wait a minute. Oh, hopefully I'm in the right. I hope I'm in the right. Oh, wait a minute. Cotiso. Okay. CCAE. So let me file. Oops, sorry. I need to. Um, share. Okay. Share. Yes. Sorry. Stop oh. sharing. Share oh. again. Uh, yeah, slide. There we are. There we are. Okay, so CCAE, our conference is coming up April fourteenth, fifteenth. I just to put in two proposals. Um, I was looking everywhere about Ledge Day for twenty twenty three. I haven't seen it. That's why I'm going to the conference. I'm really interested in it. But Coab, uh, sorry, CCAE is the Coab affiliate. And they are basically doing our, our leadership in California for adult education. And they also have a, another uh, associate group uh, for administrations, adult education administrators. So um, really looking forward to this conference. Here, Does anybody want to say anything about the conference? Where Where is it going to be? Oakland. Oakland. Yeah, Oakland. And Can actually, Ledge yeah. Day is going to be virtual. It's going to be on March 21st. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I think I saw that they had a training for that on February the 24th, uh, but the video is up on Vimo and I it hasn't I haven't been able to access it yet, but when I do, I'll put out information about that. Also, um, Peg Gould just said something uh, that uh, co our adult learners can be it can join co uh, coab free. And CCAE really in, encourages um, adult programs or adult teachers to bring their adult learners to uh, the uh, CCAE conference. So, and the reason why that's important is because, hey, where are we going to recruit the next generation of, of um, adult educators? It should be from our students. It would be really, really great to see that. So um, anyway, looking forward to that. I think I have maybe a minute left. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk about some other uh, um, initiatives. All In is um, they've just put a, together a consortium of, it's like a super group of adult literacy um, uh, groups. Um, they're basically trying to respond to the Barbara Bush National Action Plan for Literacy. So that's really good to see. American English at State uh, is a massive website full of um, information. It was initially oriented towards um, teachers of teachers of English outside the United States, but they have some really good information about teaching Amer uh, adult learners inside the United States. Take a look at their YouTube channel and then um, California Adult Training, they basically hold the, they have the training schedule for CalPRO, CASAS, OTAN, um, and CAEP. Uh, Q is Computer Using Educators, and Netta, um, the head of OTAN, talked about how Q is you know, normally associated with K-12 uh, computer users. She says, hey, adult education needs a foot in that door. And ISTE is the International Society for Technology and Education. Um, they have a really, really good conference too, if you want to dig a little bit deeper. And thank you so much.